Hey, it's Heather here. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot a video, even though it's really fucking early in the morning. I have not been to sleep. Tried to go to sleep. But, I mean, I'm not used to sleeping until daytime from working third shift, so... It's just a routine I'm stuck in, which I kind of need to stay stuck in because I'm technically kind of going to be working third shift my new job. And eventually, once I get the training out of the way, if I can even manage that because I'm losing my fucking patience with everything. And I'm trying not to. And I'm, I'm not, but I am. I don't know. I'm just, I'm dramatic as fuck, I'm as bitchy as hell, and I like myself for the most part because I like the heart that I have. I like my heart. Like, not, like, I wish I liked my actual heart more than I do my emotional heart, in all honesty, to a degree, because then maybe my health wouldn't be as shitty as it is. But, eh, fuck it. But I like my emotional heart. I think I'm a very tender, kind, sweet person. Until you piss me the fuck off. And then I'm like a demon from hell. So... And like I've stated before in my other videos, it takes a lot to get me there. It really does. Because I've had my buttons pushed my whole life with people trying to. I'm tired of being tired. I'm tired of being fed up. I'm tired of being irritated. I'm tired of being unhappy. I'm tired of being single. I am tired of taking care of things. I'm tired of taking care of things that other people want me to take care of. I don't, I would love to know what it's like to not have to take care of something that somebody else wants me to take care of. And I do not mean that in a very, very hateful way. And you may look at my life and say, Heather, you have nothing that you have to take care of unless you don't want to take care of it. Oh, mm. I care so much about other people before I care about myself. And we live in a world that is taught more to care about itself. We are living in a world, and it is not nothing new. This has been going on. I don't know who the fuck I am for as far as my purpose to be as fucked up as it is that I have to be this little sensitive little shit fuck heart that I am like I hate it because it is miserable I mean it's like you know it's like asking somebody if they want to go through war every fucking day for 30 years and the little son of a bitch just keeps standing up and is like I guess I guess. And it's like, but you're going to keep fighting the same battles with the same morons. And it is the, you know, it's the definition of insanity, you know. You keep doing the same thing, you know, and you keep getting, like, the same fucking end results. Nothing is changing. I can't change the world. I'm not even trying to fucking change the world in all damn honesty. Even though I feel like there is something driven inside of me that's like, yeah, you're, you're, you're something that's supposed to something and fuck of I know. And I'm just like, I just want one person. I just want to change one person that, that's my partner and that we get along and we live in our little bubble and like, our bubbles, our home, and, you know, whenever we're home, that's where we're at in our bubble, in our comfort zone. And other than that, we'll go out and play this little world shit fuck, screw each other over game all fucking day long. But we won't do it to each other because we'll have that strong of a bond. And whenever we're home, anything that has been an act, if you will, you know, will just like dis disappear. It'll just be like, drop the shit at the door, you know. 
But there is like this drive inside of me that is daunting and sickening and I hate it and I've tried to love it. I've hated it and loved it. It's been a love-hate relationship for 30 fucking years and I am fucking exhausted. And then that's the thing too. Last night or this morning at like one I guess. I don't know. Oh, God, I've had so many little dick prick faggot assholes, and I'm sorry to say that, and I shouldn't say that, and I do not say faggot in a mean way for as far as, like, gay, because, hell, I'm in love with a damn girl right now, and I'm kicking myself in the ass for that, but... I, I can't. I just, I can't. There is no safe place for me to go anywhere. There's no safe home. There is no safe anything. And it's like, everything was safe to a degree. When me and my kid were at our home and my kid didn't have a cell phone. In all honesty. My kid, before she had a cell phone and started hating me, ain't that funny? She gets a cell phone, she hates me. Before the cell phone, loved me to death. Would not leave my side. I could not piss without her there. I was like, I'm never going to be able to ever have a relationship with anybody ever again because I'm never going to be able to have sex because she's just going to be like beating on the door and what are y'all doing and can and can you hurry up and mom, I need you, you know. And, uh, uh, uh. But anyways, kid would not leave me alone. That's the reason I'm losing my mind that she's not home is because she has ADHD. She constantly needs attention. And even if it's not focused directly at her attention, you have to be in the same room as her. You have to be within... Uh, it's a control thing. And it's probably a little bit of a phobia thing, in all honesty, because... She probably has some abandonment issues because of her dad being the way that he's been and my husband just fucking abandoning both of us. And so she's going to make sure that I'm not abandoning her. And so now she's made sure of it and now she's like manipulating it because she's being taught how to manipulate it by my parents. But anyways, so I'm on this amino and I got all these people messaging me constantly. And they want to try to pull the wool over my eyes, you know, and that they love me and they care about me and all this. And I've been able to combat them off fairly fucking well. Actually, I've been able to combat them all off and just, you know. Now, there's one that I talked to. And then there was one last night, but that, like, he, he was younger, and so it was just like, and he wasn't young younger, but he was, like, in his 20s. And we talked last night for a little while, and, like, he was, you know, just mellow. He was probably high in all honesty. I don't know. But he was just very mellow in his conversation and everything. And we didn't stay on the phone long enough for him to like try to have any type of sexual conversation with me. So that's good because that would not have ended well. I would have hung up on his ass, you know, and we probably would have cussed each other out or something. But so anyways, I've mentioned in my other YouTube video that I had these two young, 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 young kids hitting on me. 16 year olds one of them's a boy and the other's a girl the girl has a lot of issues though supposedly and the boy has issues supposedly too supposedly his mom's dead so he's all talking to me and hitting on me and can you be my mom and shit like that and i'm like huh you're funny i'm like no and so, I just called him out on his shit, and I was like, listen here, I was like, you little, 
you know, I mean, I didn't cuss him out, but I was like, listen here, I was like, you're just lying to me, or are you telling the truth? Like, you gotta pick, you know, because I can't, I can't talk to you no more if you're gonna keep fucking, like, lying to me, because something's fishy, you know, and I was like, so, what are you lying to me about? Go ahead and tell me, you know, and we can start new, and we can be friends, and like, I can talk to you, because that's what I'm here for, is to socialize. Because I have no vehicle. I've, I've not been able to get out. I'm used to having a kid home 24-7 for the most part that talks 90 to nothing because she is my mini-me. And for a year now, it's like nothing. And it's like, except for the whispers and the shit talk. Oh, and I love who reported me on Facebook. I don't know who it was, but I love it. It's fucking... Man, that's that's the most hilarious, like inter like internally, like the devil is laughing inside of me because of that. Because that's how fucking funny that is. But yet it's not at the same time. Because it's the devil laughing. But it's like, really? This shit has been going on, and then my childhood abuse went on, and I've had so much shit just going on constantly. And I'm going to sit there and say I'm depressed and sad and crying and all this. I'm going to say all that shit. I'm going to tell people to their face. To their face, home fry. Okay? Like, seriously. And just be like, <laughs> I want to kill myself. I want to die. And they're just like, oh, come on, you'll feel better. Don't talk about that. Don't do blah, 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 you know, and shit like that. <laughs> and I write on my Facebook, when was it? Last night or the night before? The night before. I write on my Facebook, I said, so, I said, when should I kill myself? And I'm being a smart ass to a degree for the most part when I wrote that. Yeah, I'm sad. Yeah, I'm depressed. Been there, done that. Got the fucking, you know, sticker, the, the fucking hat, the t-shirt. I got it all, okay? I done... It, uh, ah. It's like, it's like somebody being like, oh my god, your hair is brown, Heather. Do you know that? And I would be like, it's been brown my whole life. Are you in staying? Can I help you? You're scaring me. I'm going to go over somewhere and you're not coming. <laughs> That's about how I feel. <laughs> and so I wrote on my Facebook, I was like, when should I kill myself? I was like, should I kill myself now? Or later, because people are smart asses. And these dumb fucking cunt dipshits do not understand. In their, oh, I'm so much more smarter than you. Yet you can stand right face to face with me and tell me that you're suicidal. Or that you've thought about suicide. Or that you're depressed. Or that you wish you was dead. And I'm just gonna, oh. Well, I hope you get to feeling better. Well, I hope everything's better for you. Well, I hope everything works out for you. And all this. Yet I'm going to write it on, on Facebook. And everybody's like, oh my God, we have to report her. <laughs> oh my God. Like Jesus Christ. But anyways, so the reason I put that up there is not because... <sighs> You might as well say everything that comes out of my mouth is a fucking metaphor, okay? I don't understand how fucking, um, people can do that for, like, a living, especially people that are musically inclined and talented, which, granted, I'm kind of, you know, I've been told that I'm pretty decent. I'm not like, I don't know what the fuck I am when it deals with music. I just know I'm better than some, especially some people that were tone deaf that I had to be in choir class with and stuff. But anyways, that's a long ass time ago. But anyways, <clears throat> that is put up there on my Facebook. 
as a way of saying, can y'all stop being smartasses? It's basically what it's saying. And then, um, for an example, I got on uh, today or this morning, and one of my <laughs> one of my three friends on there. <laughs> Anyways, one of my three three supposed friends on there, and yet out of my three friends, I don't know anybody that has been like, oh my god, you're crying? You know, whenever I'm upset or something, and I'll make it obvious that I'm upset, you know, in some way or another, and then be like, can, can I talk to you? No, instead, it's like make fun of, shit talk, and all that. And that's like even dealing with Jennifer, I don't know what the deal is, because like, Supposedly, she's crushing on me, you know, she's asking me anyway, but and then she's not no more, and so maybe I was just like a rebound, but it didn't work because I wouldn't, you know, so it was just like, okay, and she's still very helpful for as far as taking me places and everything, but she's like trying to do some, I don't know, she, 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 She's like every other human on the face of the goddamn planet. There you go. That's it in a nutshell. She wants everything. She wants it for herself. She wants the best of the best, the cream of the crop. And she'll step on anybody that she feels that she got to to get to her. And she is constantly debating on who to step on and who to not step on. And she can't figure it out with me. If she should step on me or if she should keep me by her side because I might be useful. But anyways, uh, back to the friend or whatever in the meme that was on Facebook. The meme, it says, oh, you know, a guy really loves you or cares about you or something like that when he's willing to nail you on the couch. So it shows this guy fucking this girl on the couch. And then it shows a girl sitting on the couch and a guy back behind her with a nail gun aimed at her head. And I was like, see, I was like, that." speaking of coincidences and everything, and this is what it is. Y'all want into the mind of a person that's dealing with some shit? I'm giving it. I'm putting it out here. And y'all are still walking around like, we just don't understand it. Why are you so sad? What is wrong with you? We don't get it. You know, and it's like... I have put it into every fucking term within the goddamn English language, okay? Catch on, buddy. Like, damn. Son of a bitch. Can you get the memo? But anyways. Whew. Sorry. I'm really mad. <laughs> I'm really, really mad. Oh. But, um. So I wrote up under it because I just couldn't no more. I couldn't just leave it and I didn't want to just unfriend her because it's a meme and there was like three or four others that makes it come across like she don't want to be my friend and I'm like, bitch, just say it. Like that's what goes on my, in my head whenever I feel like it's something towards me. And then it's like, oh, psychology says that people don't think about you as much as you think that they think about you. I have a lifetime that has kind of proven that shit wrong. So apparently I just lived in live in some like hog waller fucking hillbilly hell from the depths of Satan's fucking asshole or some shit where everybody's got to run their goddamn mouth. And yet nobody can fucking directly speak to me. So anyways... So that's what the thing is, the meme is. Oh, a guy will nail you if he really cares about you. And so he's fucking you on the couch or he's got a nail gun pointed at the back of your head. You're sitting on the couch. And I was like, yeah, that's really funny. See, the devil's on my ass because my dad held me and my sister at gunpoint on the couch. Do you see how that relates? Do you see? Okay, there's a couch and there's a, a female sitting on the couch. Okay? And there is harm being... In one of the photos, harm being, like, shown as being directed towards the female character. Do you understand the fucking similarity there? Of me and my sister sitting on the couch when we are teenagers, and my dad holding a loaded gun to our heads. And he's at the back, 
just like it is in the picture, except it's a nail gun. Oh, well, well, that wasn't aimed towards you. That wasn't made because of you. That wasn't this because of that and because of, because of, because of, because of, because of. I don't give a flying fuck. It's rude. It's hateful. That's just like somebody at my new job who wanted to make fun of people that are autistic. He's like, oh, you know, people that are autistic, you know how they have to do everything. And I mean, I, I'm not trying to be a smart ass. I'm not. I'm not. I'm really, 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 really not. But I'm tired of nobody caring about my feelings when I care about everybody's. Jesus Christ. Anyways, he's standing there talking about autistic people, and he's like, you know how they have to do everything in a pattern? And they was like, yeah, we thought about uh, putting them on, um, uh, you know, or so, I don't know who he was talking about, if it's somebody that actually works there, and if it is, whoo-hoo. But anyways, uh, or if it's just like a, a example. I don't know. I didn't catch that much. And I'm just like that kid. You know, you're not supposed to hear shit. I hear. Oh, God fucking love a duck, do I? Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, uh. I hear. And so he's standing there and he's like, yeah, you know, we thought about like them doing, you know, this or whatever because it's it's a structured thing and so it's a routine and all that. But then like say somebody, you know, because it's a restaurant that I work at, say somebody, you know, changes the order and says, oh, but I don't want this, you know, with that order or I don't want that on it or whatever. And he's like, so they would freak out and, you know, be like, oh, God, oh, God, what do I do? What do I do? You know, and everything, because they're autistic. And I get on a generalized term. I get it. I get it. I've admitted. I've, I've admitted. I've made fun of people. I haven't in a very long time. I've tried not to. But technically, I'm making fun of the whole fucking world for being dickheads right about now. So, yeah, I'm making fun of people. But I'm making fun of people as a whole motherfucker, you know, and I'll throw myself in that fucking boat if I got to. I don't give a shit. But I'm not going to sit here and seek out and, like, individualize and target. And that is the thing is I cannot stand is when everybody wants to just target somebody. I, I don't know. And then that's even like a when I went over to my previous job that I used to have or whatever, there's a guy over there that is known to gossip as much as the women do. Actually, he is what keeps the gossip alive over there where I used to work. I'm not going to lie. He's like the king of gossip. And the thing is that's so funny to me is that he's a Libra, which is the same thing my dad is, which is the same thing that Eminem, Marshall Mathers is. And then Marshall Mathers, like, supposedly, you know, talks about, like, in his music and stuff that, like, he's, I don't know. He, he makes it come across like he's, he's really struggled with everything. And it's like, y you've struggled with everything until when? There had to be a point where you weren't struggling as bad as you once used to. So... Yeah. Or are you still struggling that bad? And so would your life have been the same if you would have still never have became this this famous, you know, rap god, you know, person versus an average Joe still working at a fucking restaurant? Is your life still just as shitty? Like, I don't know if it is or not, but... And then, I mean, I hadn't paid that much attention in a long time, kind of, to all his music. And so there was the music, what was it? I don't know if it was on Relapse or I don't know. But it's like his music, the past two, three CDs, I guess, you can kind of tell that he's not coming from such a kind of bitter, you know, anger of having it rough. And everything, and that's good because 
if his life is better, then he needs to be rapping about better things. That way it inspires people that are struggling to let them know that things are going to be better. Because if he's constantly rapping about like bad things and shitty things, then it makes us sit here and go, okay, so your life was shitty before you were a famous rapper and it's shitty now. So if it's shitty now, then why the fuck is anybody alive? Because you've made a pretty decent name for yourself in all hell. You've made an excellent name for yourself. You've made, I don't know how much money. And so your life should be relatively decent because money's supposed to buy worldly happiness at least. But anyways, so this guy that's over here at his previous job, he's like, the gossip king and he will not shut the fuck up and i i actually like him like as a person i don't like him like him even though he he likes likes anybody in all honesty but i don't like him like him but uh he, he's all right and i've actually talked to him like two times and stuff but it's like he don't pull his little shit and ass game on me because he knew from day one like I guess he could just sense it, that, like, I'm not going to fall for your fucking shit. And it's like, so he would legit talk to me almost like I was a dude, and so it was pretty cool. But, um, anyways, whenever I went over, um, what, two weeks ago, and somebody asked me where, one of the customers was like, where have you been, you know, because they miss me. And I was like, I quit. And I was like, I've been gone for like two months. And they was like, oh, damn. And I was like, yeah. I was like, I couldn't I couldn't take it no more. And they're like, wow, what happened? <sighs> I get tired of repeating myself. And I've said that in, what, yesterday's video or the day before or some shit like that. And that's the reason I wish these videos, I could make them as long as I wanted to. That way I could put it all out there. I wouldn't feel that I have to repeat myself. I get tired of repeating myself. And even for as far as when I was trying to date back in the fucking day, man, I got tired of repeating myself. Yes, my name is Heather, motherfucker. Can you read? Yes, that is my birthday. That is how old I am. Yes. I do live in fucking Georgia. <laughs> Figure it out. Son of a bitch. But I get tired of repeating myself. And so people asking me, and then when I know that they don't know, some of them do, and they just ask for face value. So, And I'm just like, I can't. It's not that I can't play the mind games. I can. I can. Oh, God, I can. I was trained by my mom and my dad. And if you meet them, you will not like them, genuinely. <laughs> like you, you, I don't, I, I, oh, God, I'm doomed. But anyways, <laughs> I don't want to play the mind games. I don't want to. I don't like them. I don't think it's good for the world. I don't think it's good for society. I don't think it's good for children. I don't, I don't think it's good at all. But anyways, um, so I'm over there and that person's like, why aren't you here? And I'm like, oh, I quit. And they're like, why? Where, what's going on? And I'm like, it's a long story. And before I could even get out, he, he hopped in, this guy. And he's like, oh, she, she just had a mental breakdown. She just had a mental breakdown. I was like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I wish to, like, yeah, I'm sad. Yeah, I'm depressed. Yeah, my kid is taken from me. Let me take your kid from you that you have raised by yourself to a degree. No man has been around, really, to help you raise your child. No woman, no nobody, except for your mommy and your daddy, who wouldn't even let you get a fucking license. 
and let me take your kid away from you and see how fucking happy you are. Put yourself in my shoes. Would you be happy or would you be upset? And then that's the thing, too, is everybody loves to say what they could do if they were in so-and-so's shoes. And people look at me, and they're like, if I, if I had a house, if I had a this, if I had a that, even though I don't have a house, I'm living in an apartment. But if I had, if I had, I would do, I would do, I would do, I would do. Okay, shut up and do it, motherfucker. You were born, unless you were born with some type of, like, really, you know, crippling disability, I guess you could say. And then even at that, like, they're... There's people that have certain disabilities that defy the odds all the fucking time. They go against the grain and they show people. So, you stop sitting around and shit talking about me and I'm, if I was you, and how about you be you and you show me then? And then when I knock on the door and I'm like, hey, can you tell me, you know, the same advice that I'm, oh God, I hate it. I'm such a textbook definition of an INFP, it is ridiculous, because it keeps dinging in my head, you know, you're an idealist, and you're a dreamer, and you're this, and you're that, and I'm just like, yeah, I am. <laughs> oh my god, am I. And whenever it showed uh, the thing of the 80s show being broke down, or the 70s show, that 70s show. I think I said 80s show in the other video. I don't know. But anyways, the 70s show. And it was like, you know, listing off the personality of the Myers-Briggs and the INFP was Leo. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, chill, relax, you know. Just everything is what it is, man. But Jesus Christ, I don't know. I just, I don't fit. I don't fit this world. I feel like I just, I try to, but like, it's like nobody gets me. And the thing is, is I can, it's not, and the thing is, is it's all a fake ass illusion that everybody thinks that they're pulling the wool over my eyes because they would rather all point at me and be like, She's the problem instead of looking at themselves. And then that's like the whole empath thing. Are you an empath? Do you show people the things that they don't want to see about themselves? And boy, I did that this morning with somebody. <laughs> but I do that regularly with people. I uh, wrote the guy that, uh, what is it? Let's see, it would have been, fuck, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it was before I got married. I mean, not before, shit, after. Let's see. 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah. Yeah, it was like in t late 2013, I think, or sometime in 2014, that I went out with this dude. And uh, he told me that uh, he had to take me home because his girlfriend was dropping off the baby. And so I was writing him this morning, and I'm like, so how's your kid? Just trying to have a normal conversation with him, and he's like, what kid? <laughs> I was just like, oh my God. Really? People? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And then that's just like the guy I was talking to last night. Like, he was very, he's in college, so he was very logical, and he was just straight up, I mean, just loved him to death for that. I love people for honesty. God, I love it. I fucking adore it. Like, you want me to like you? Be honest. Be honest. But anyways, uh, so this guy I was talking to last night or whatever, uh, being honest and shit, talking about that, it's like, uh, he's like, you know, he's like, everybody wants the same thing, and I'm like, yeah, and he he's a guy, so he thinks everybody wants sex, and everybody's gonna pull any card, is what the way he worded it, and he's from Mexico, and he's like, yeah, anybody's gonna pull any card that they can, that way they can get what they want, and he's like, people are gonna pull the sad card, and the drama card, and the this and that, so that way they get what they want, and then, and then, and then, all this, and everything, 
And the funny thing is, is, like, later on after me and him got off the phone, like, he, he uh, said something to me, and I was like, oh, you know, and then I was like, laugh out loud, you know, and he's like, damn it, and he's like, that was my card, that was my sad card, <laughs> I was just like, oh, tough, <laughs> but, uh, anyways, like, I don't agree that all people are after sex. As much as I agree that all people are very self-absorbed, very narcissistic, except for me. So something is broken inside of me. I'm narcissistic in some ways, but I'm a lot less narcissistic than the majority of people. There you go. I'm not saying everybody out there has narcissistic personality disorder or what the fuck ever. But I'm saying that the, the majority of the population is more selfish than I am. God, are they? Because I don't even, I don't, I, what is satisfaction? It's like, uh, what is it? Where Britney Spears, uh, sings that remake or whatever. I can't get no satisfaction. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah. Like, and then people are like, well, you'd get it if you were just more mean, if you didn't care what people thought about you, if you were mean, if you were hateful, if you were this, if you were that. That's what I get told by, let's say, A and B. And then C and D over here just keep pissing me the fuck off. And finally, one day, I just look at D and I just kind of lay it down. You know, I just like lay it out on the table. And I'm like, listen here, you son of a bitch. And then that's when D wants to go cry with C. And then they go tell A and B, she's so mean. She's so hateful. <laughs> you know. And then A and B comes and talks to me and they're like, whoa. You took that way too far. <laughs> and that's when I'm just like, what the fuck? You told me to stand up for myself and be mean. And I did it to people that were being mean to me, and now you're telling me I'm mean? Where you were telling me that that's a good quality to have? Like, can can the merry-go-round stop, damn it? I'm sick of it. God, am I sick of it. I want to get off this ride. But anyways... I don't know. I got a bunch of shit on my mind. Oh, but uh, the kid that got to talking to me last night or whatever, I just flat out told him, I was like, you know, I can't talk to you no more. Stop this shit and everything. And that little... <laughs> wrote me back. And see, I'm not past judgment on him. That That is a very, very, very cute thing about me is I... I might say, I might have opinions about you. Just like the liar this morning. That is an opinion. It is even probably a damn well-known fact. But it is not a judgment. Facts are facts. A judgment is way more harsh than a fact. That's just like... Hmm. Let's see. What can I give as a good example that's not going to make me look like shit in any way because people are shitty? Hmm. There's nothing in all honesty. People just perceive me as how the fuck ever they want. Okay, two kids, right? They're playing, right? At one of them's house. And the one that doesn't live there steals. And then they're looking for whatever's missing. They can't find it at home. The one that, you know, they can't find their stuff at home. It's stolen. It's gone. It's missing. We ask, or they ask to go over to their friend's house. They go over to their friend's house, and they find out that their friend actually stole it. That's a fact. But then the judgment comes. And the judgment is a choice. And it's not just a choice of one of the parties involved. It is the choice of both parties involved. Okay, are you going to say you're sorry? 
and give me my stuff back and apologize and tell me that you'll never do it again and you better not ever do it again and I'll forgive you or are you going to be like, well, I stole it because you had so many that were similar to it and you defend yourself and then I have the choice of, you know, else being your friend or not still. Or you're going to smart off to me like that about, well, you had so many that was the same thing. It was just a different color and this and that. So I stole it or what the fuck ever. <laughs> and it's like, okay, uh, you stole it um, and you need to apologize because this person didn't do nothing wrong. And you did do something wrong. And this is when these little peckerheads look at you and say, well, if you can't understand why I did what I did and why I stole what I stole, because I don't have any of them and you have four of them that are all different colors and you're really not my friend and you really don't care about me and all that shit. You know, and then they, they go from that to, so I guess we're really not friends. So we can't be friends anymore. Here, take back your toy, you know, or what the fuck ever. And bye. And they slam the door in your face. But the truth is, is they can't handle that you just damaged their own fucking ego. So they'd rather put it off on you. You know, that, that you're the one that like, you know, caused the whole problem and it's like you're an idiot I didn't do anything wrong oh my god I'm just in a very pissed off mood I've had a very bad night it's like that little peckerhead and I shouldn't even say that supposed teenager Rope Man was like, you're a very bad person. You're a very mean person. You're a very bad woman. You're so mean. Now I ran back and I was like, okay, bye. And then he's like, but wait, wait, wait. We can, we can still talk, but wait, wait, wait. You know. <laughs> and I was just like, Okay, you're right. We can still talk. And I was like, we can still talk because I'm allowing it. And I'm choosing it for this moment in time. And I was like, and I'm choosing it to tell you that you just passed a judgment on me. Because you just wrote a list of what you think about me. And little boy, I didn't do shit like that to you. I asked you questions. About your mama being dead. And about why you like older women. And why you think you're in love with me. And why you think that you could even date me. You know. And even though I've told you no. And that you're only a few years older than my kid. Oh, uh, like so. Yeah. Uh, take care. Goodbye. And then he tried to write me again, and of course I just ignored it. But anyways. Oh, and then, <laughs> Jamie, I gotta mention you. And you probably eat it up anyway, if you ever watch these. Because you just like everybody else, son. God, you are. But, uh, I wrote on my Facebook on uh, my original, I wrote some comments up under some photos. And Jamie is tagged in one of them. And Jamie is my sister's ex-boyfriend of a long-ass time. The ex-boyfriend that uh, groped me and asked to give me a Brazilian bikini wax. God, he's horrible. Huh. <sighs> but anyways, uh, 
So I was writing, and I wrote, you know, about how sad I was, like, kind of in one of the photos, or something sad. And this little juvenile-minded person that he is, I don't even write, oh, that's sad, or oh, are you okay? Like, acknowledge my comment. But instead, because it pinged, you know, that I put a comment and he's tagged in the photo. He's like, oh, are those Pumas? Look at me rocking those Pumas. And then he's like, oh, well, that must be Skechers. Never mind. Which I get it. And I get the whole sense of humor thing. I do it too. But I also acknowledge the fact of what the fuck is going on. That's just like this little girl that, um... She's, what, 13, I think, that's writing me. And she's, bless her heart. I don't know. She is the, she's probably, she's probably the future version of me to a degree. She is so sweet and so kind. And she's just, she's just a sweetheart. And we just talk, like, she, you know, how's your day at school, this and that. Like I would my own kid or whatever. And, uh. She even got on to me and told me that I needed to go to bed and take care of myself. But, uh, other than that, she's just real sweet. And fuck, I forgot what the hell I was going to say. Like, my mind just went, phew. Talking about Jamie. About the comment he made. Oh, acknowledging things. What was it? Oh, yeah, she wrote me, and she's like, you know, how you been? And I was like, good. And I was like, how you been? She's like, good. And I was like, how did your school day go? Because I know she's still in school. I said, how did school go? And she said, and it's the same thing I'd say to my daughter, you know, how did your school go? Oh, it wasn't too good, she wrote. And I said, why? And she said, no. And I said, well, you want to talk about it? And she said, nah. Which my kid has said to me before. And unless my kid looks like completely and totally upset in the face, then usually I'm just like, okay, well, let's watch a movie. Before she got the fucking phone. But anyways, that my dad got her. But, uh, so this kid, you know, or whatever, 13-year-old girl, she's like, no, I don't want to talk about it. I'm like, okay. And then she's like, just talking to me about other stuff, and so am I to her. But the thing is, is like, when she said, yeah, she had a bad day, I didn't go, hey, do you know where, you know, and like, write a joke. No, I said, do you want to talk about it? I acknowledged it. Like, holy shit. How hard is it for people to do that? Apparently, it's a very, very difficult thing for most people. Really? There you go, Clarabelle. Oh, shit. <laughs> Make your breath smell better. That dog will eat about anything. <laughs> but, I've just had a really bad night. And I didn't really even want to shoot a video right now, and I don't I don't even know if I'm gonna upload this, but I probably will. Because I gotta go grocery shopping tonight. And I'm done tired, and I gotta go to sleep before I go grocery shopping. Oh god. Every time I do that I feel like I'm fucking uh that little what is it? What is his name? Sally? I don't know. Off of Horton, here's a who. But she's like, this is my, you know, flower and everybody's name da -da 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 on it or what the fuck ever and stuff. And she's just like, ah. Oh. And she <laughs> goes off. You know? Fuck. But anyways. <laughs> God. Oh, and then this other person last night wrote me and was like, you know, oh, I want to take care of you. I want to take care of you and bullshit. And I was just like, 
this one I was upset. It was after I read that kids, you know, you're a horrible person, and it just whew, lit my ass on fire and upset me. I cried. And then this other person wrote me and was like, oh, you know, I love you and you're beautiful and I want to take care of you and I'll accept your child and all this shit and everything. Which is, I've done been there, done that, heard that, you know, married it and then it left me, so I'm good. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so they're saying all that shit and I'm just like, yeah. And I'm like, listen, I'm in a really bad mood, and I don't want to talk to anybody right now. And they're like, oh, what's wrong? So I just like, like <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I cussed in it, not towards them, but just about what the deal is a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and right up under, they was like, oh, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> And I was just like, bet. We'll see if you do. We'll see if you do. We'll see if you got the nerve to or if you think you do. But the thing is, is most guys think that they do. Most guys think that they do have the nerve to put up with me. You know, the strength to deal with the mental endurance that, you know, they'd have to have to put up with all the shit that I'm going to put them through because I'm going to make them grow or die. <laughs> like, there ain't no staying who you are when you're with me, bucko. Like, it ain't happening. And I don't mean that in a bad way. If I date you, if I marry you, if I like you, if I anything with you, then that is because I like certain qualities about you and I see your potential. But damn it, I'm going to make you shine if I can, and you should want to do the same to me and pull out my good and my potential. And so on and so forth. But it's not going to be easy. There's growing pains involved. You okay? Get out of the way. I'm so sleepy. I need to eat and go to sleep. What do you want from me? Get. Go. 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 Thank you. You are such a dork, Clarabelle. Yeah. Silly dog. But I'm going to end it because it's at 53 fucking minutes. YouTube won't let you do over an hour and seven minutes. Yeah, it's that seven minute mark, motherfucker, and it cuts the fuck off. <laughs> But, uh, oh, God. Oh, and Jennifer, that's one thing, too. Like, I don't think I said it or whatever. Or I did. She said to me in the car the other day, she's like, why do you want your kid back? And I wanted to go, okay, let me take your kid from you and then ask you a year later why you would want your kid back. Like, people don't think. They don't think when they talk. And the thing is, though, is she probably did because she probably watches my videos on occasion. And she's probably like, oh, you're a little smart ass because you're talking about me in your video. And you're not talking to me to my face, you know, and being like a complete and total like, you know, I don't know. Not an asshole, but like you're not talking. And the thing is, is I, I mean... It, <laughs> I don't say, I don't think I say anything hateful about her other than I'm wondering what the hell the deal is, you know, and shit, but anyway, I don't know. It's like she's trying to play mind games with me, but hell, it ain't no worse than anybody else does to me. So it's not like I'm sitting here saying, oh, don't like her if you ever meet her, if you ever know me, know her, and this and that. Don't like her because she's playing mind games. 
Everybody does, apparently, except for little old me. I try to be as straight forthcoming as fucking possible, and I get shit on because of it. And then I'm like, maybe this time I won't. Definition of insanity again. Keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. <sighs> but I'm just tired. But um, another thing that she said to me too is that uh, she said that I need to stop playing the victim card. I have heard that from everybody. And yet the thing is, is even though I've heard that literally from everybody, except for my kid. Wow. My kid has never, my kid actually gets it. My kid has never told me to shut up for as far as me being upset. Because she gets it. Like she, damn, like it's just like light bulb, ding, Heather, wait. And it's like, my kid fucking gets it, man. Lord does she. Me and her are so accepting of each other. It's it's. So I guess I do got my person to a degree, even though it's not like a romantic person and all that. But I mean, hell, if you had to pick between a romantic partner or your child, who would you pick? And then if you weren't given the option of really having a romantic partner, but you are given the option of actually having a kid. But anyways, my kid... Lord, I love her. I miss her. She's so stubborn sometimes. She's so adorable, though, too. <clears throat> but, uh, fuck. But it's like, nobody gets it. Or whatever. Like, and the thing is, is like, nobody gets it, and yet these are the same people that when I'm on my high horse of, okay, maybe, maybe I am... Maybe it is all in my mind, and maybe I can just overcome it, you know, and stop being sad about it. And stop asking somebody to care that I'm sad about it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not sad about it. I was sad about it. It's in the past. I'm not sad about it no more. Let me move on. That's when everybody starts calling me up, telling me what they're sad about. From shit that happened months ago, weeks ago, or years ago, and I'm just like. Pot, calling, kettle, black. Muhammad, what? Muhammad, who? What? You know, and I'm just like, you little fucking faggot assholes. Don't ask me to feel sorry for you when something's happened to you and you couldn't feel sorry for me. And that's just like even uh, my ex-best friend or what the hell ever. Like, or whatever. That's like the godmother to my mom and it's like, I love her and care about her, but then again, I, I'm done. I'm done. Because she's passed judgment on me just like that little boy did. And her judgment was that I wasn't good enough for her years ago. And I've been blinded to not paying attention to it because I've been hopeful because I believe in working things out. But now, it's like, yeah. But it's like, I complained about Adam leaving me and me having to take care of Ava alone without him. And I complained about being pregnant alone and the first year of Ava's life alone. And guys are more inclined to be stepping into, I don't know why, but if it's a young kid, guys are more inclined to be stepping into the uh, into their lives as a stepdad than they are the older kids. And so then I was even more mad. And so I'm mad and I'm sad and I'm complaining. And she's like, okay, it's been years now. Can you shut up about it? And I'm like, I'm sorry. But then finally when her and her boyfriend of several years broke up and she kept complaining about it, I kind of threw it up in her face and was like, 
it's been two years now. It's been three years now. Can you hush about him now? I'm tired of hearing about him, just like you's tired of hearing about Adam. I get it now. But at the same time, I wasn't very hateful about it because she was there for me to kind of complain about Adam. But it's like I was just like, you know, make up your mind. And so then I've listened to her complain about how she hadn't had kids and a life for as far as marriage and stuff like that. And I've listened and listened and listened and listened and listened. And I mean, my kid's 12. So I've heard basically for 12 years how you haven't had a kid. And I'm sorry. But I can't impregnate you. And I'm not going to pay for you to go to a sperm bank unless it's like you would have been my roommate, us living together, because I do not like you in a way that I could have dated you. And it's like, you're like, I really want a baby, but I'm never going to have enough money. And I'd be like, you know what? Since you're my best friend, we'll go in on the shit 50-50. But anyways, that's, that's the way I would have been. And that's the thing, too, is it's like I'm very nice and I'm very reasonable, but I'm also very mean and very strict. And not in a way that people try to make me out to be. People hear the word mean and strict and they go running for the hills. Oh, God, structure. Ah, you know. It's just like, no, calm the fuck down. Until you pass judgment on me, I will not pass judgment on you. You pass judgment on me. Oh. But, anyways. Yeah. And I'm not mean until you actually, if you actually do something to actually physically harm me or my child, it's not going to be pretty. But uh, other than that, I'm actually very chill. I'm very calm. I'm very relaxed. I like to talk about things. I am the mediator. If you look at the Myers-Briggs test, what the INFP is. And so we can talk about things. But the thing is, is nobody can talk to me, with me, to make plans with me. Because nobody can stay on the same page. Because I can sit down, for instance, like with my husband, and make out a whole plan. And it's like, okay, we're going to get married. Within a year, you're going to help me get my license. And uh, uh, I'm going to have my first job within a year of us being together. And a car. Even if it's a shitty car, but still. Just something that gets me to work. And gets me to the grocery store. And we'll be good. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to help you with that. Yeah, I'm going to pay for a wedding. We're going to have a wedding. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah, I'm going to, 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 I'm going to. Okay, 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 okay. You know, and I'm going to, 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 you know, and I'm going to do this, you know. And so I gave him all my list of things. So we shook on it is the best way to say it. And so we get married. And it's like he, he never did anything that he said he was going to. Not a damn thing. And then I still put in a lot of effort doing pretty much the shit that I said I was going to, even though I shouldn't have. So I wasted my fucking energy and my damn time because I thought eventually it would pay off. And I'm tired of putting my energy into shit for nothing to ever fucking pay off, man. Because everybody fucking lies. Everybody sits down and is like, yeah, I'm on the same boat as you. And we're teammates in this. And we're going to go 50-50. And I swear to God, it don't have to be anything fucking big, motherfucker. It don't have to be a goddamn marriage. It don't have to be having a fucking kid. But holy fucking shit, man. Can we go Dutch on the fucking date? And I'll pay for my fucking food and you pay for yours. But son of a bitch, don't reach over and grab my fucking fries. You get what I'm saying? Like... Be who the fuck you say you are. <laughs> Whew. Damn, piss me off. Jesus Christ. But anyways, I don't know. People, people can't. People cannot be who they say that they are when they sit down and they make a plan with you and y'all are two people coming to an agreement. It never sticks. It never, ever, ever, ever sticks. It never happens. 
But I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I hope like hell everybody's doing a fucking hell of a lot better than me. Even though there's a part of me that wants to go around with a fucking machine gun shooting and killing everybody because I'm so fucking fed up with life. Because I just want somebody to do the shit for me that I've done for everybody. I want the same amount of effort put into me that I've put into people. And I don't mean that if you're Jennifer, okay? Or if you're somebody that's newly came into my life, okay? Jennifer, you've you've put into my life, you know, and I've put into yours, and you've probably even kind of, because you're the ride, which is giving me the sustenance to go to the store and eat and all that. But then again, if you wasn't here, I would find a fucking way. I'm going to. I always fucking have, and I kind of even hate that about myself, because it's like, I can't even try to be weak and be like, somebody take care of me. I'm so pitiful. Because even though I can get to the point that it's like I'm pitiful and I'm dead and I'm skinny and I look like I'm dying and I look like I'm insane and losing my mind, I always pull my ass back up every fucking time. I never have anybody come and grab my hand and be like, you, you need some help? You want me to help you? Or if I do, it's very, 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 very fucking rare. But I'm going to go ahead and end it here because this is 66 and it'll cut it off. I hope everybody's doing good. Keep putting your best foot forward. You need somebody to talk to. Hit me up on my Facebook Messenger. Can't guarantee that I'll be on there even within the next week right about now with the way that I feel. But still, I will hit you up when I get the chance and when I look at my Messenger. Other than that, do good. Keep trying. Put your best foot forward. Sorry, that truck. But anyways, put your best foot forward. I'll catch you later.